Welcome to the second episode of our Anyone Can Wear the Mask series. Jeff Stormer is back with us to walk us through the process, but before we get to that, we do have some announcements. First up, I've been having a lot of fun with my live stream of Chimera, and this last Friday was no exception. You can head over to twitch.chimera.games to listen to the episode on demand and see how I took some tips from some of our Evolution cast episodes and put them into action. Adding Eldritch Horror to the Magical Girl Fantasy Superhero campaign that we've been running for a few sessions now. Next up, if you're quite into horror, absolutely check out the latest episode of Losers A Love Story, uh, which just released this last Saturday, presented by the folks at A Horror Borealis. It is probably my best sound design work to date, and it was a remarkable episode all around. Of course, it is geared towards mature audiences, and has many content warnings, so listen with care, please. Lastly, uh, we are still out of reviews as of this recording, so it would be really great if we could have more people leave some reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or whichever podcast app you can leave reviews on. We love to read your reviews uh, when they come in, and we love to read them here, too. I don't think we have any other announcements for this week's episode. So, without further ado, let's get to the second part of this fantastic series. Last time on Character Creation Cast, Amelia was creating a magic-based hero. Jeff was creating an historical district in Kirby City for our hero to save. And I was just about to dive into creating the villain. We're going to pick up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Now, the villain is interesting because, like, your character, we don't create yet. And yeah. there's a reason for that, because we because don't because we don't know like Ryan. Are. Exactly, <laughs> it's 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 out of spite for Ryan. Um, I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I, I eventually deserve it. Apparently, <laughs> um, the reason that we don't make the villain up front is because we don't know who they are yet. Like mm. we don't like a big part of this game is that like we're going to come to learn the villain, the nemesis, the the big villain that's going to show up at the downfall. They are the worst possible person for the hero to face, right? Like they are the absolute nightmare for the hero. They're the one person that is going to be able to knock the hero down. We don't really have enough to make that yet. Mm. You know, like we need to kind of learn what our hero's limits are. We need to know like what our hero's weaknesses and fears and like what types of challenges the hero is going to be most directly opposed by. So we leave. So we we come up with those when we have them, when we have that answer, when we flip the downfall card, we've we've played through several rounds of the hero story already. So we leave that. So we leave that for now. <laughs> However, I do have a question for you, Ryan. Yeah. Um, Knowing what we know about our hero in our city. Yes. I want you to name like three to four threats, three to four things that the hero is going to face. These can be very specific. These can be like named supervillains. These can be, you know, something as as specific as like a train car is is on a runaway crash course. These can be <laughs> extremely broad, you know, supervillains, natural disasters, or they can be anything in between. Like it's kind of your call, but okay. I want you to just kind of name three or four things that our hero is going to face. OK, so these are just uh, like scenarios or or whatever to, to kind of set up what what our hero is going to. Yeah, kind of have to deal with in the comic run. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to assign each of the things that you create a number from two to ten. OK. 
And the reason that we're going to do that is that when we flip a card, if it has that number, it tells us it's that threat. And what's going to come from that is there are four fours in a deck of cards. If we put down using Spider-Man as an example, if we say that Mysterio is the number four, then we know that every time we draw four, Mysterio has popped back up. Okay. Which means that we get to create these kinds of ongoing like villain threat relationships, right? Like, yeah, these 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 enemies that are a thorn in Spider-Man's side that keep popping up in all the worst places. Mm -hmm. They keep coming back. Okay, you know, Superman has to keep saving trains that fall down. Spider-Man keeps crossing paths with Mysterio. So we assign it to a number so that we can say every time a two comes up, we know that this villain is going to show up again and again and again and again. Awesome. So I I think the first threat that I want to throw out there is um, kind of the reverse of what you just described. Mm -hmm. We've already got a like good person Mysterio. Uh, Let's say one of the threats is a bad person Spider-Man. Oh, I do like that. Like it, especially especially with like a mystical like spin on it, like a a a a creepy spider ghost thing is very cool. Yeah, yeah, something uh, something but that's also just a like, teenage nuisance. Also yeah. a teenage nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> a magical is, teenage spider is what I would like. Who yeah. is also a threat and a menace. <laughs> uh, but they still have the same like uh, the quippy attitude of like, like uh, <laughs> being super sarcastic and like talking, <laughs> talking down to you in a like teenager sort of way. I hate teenagers. I hate them. <laughs> All right. So where do we want to put down our spider teen? Oh, goodness. Um, you know what? It, it, let's just go the closest to the teen numbers and go with 10. All right. So anytime we flip a 10, we're going to meet our teenage uh, spider spider character. OK, we've got to have ghosts, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you got it. Right. Got it. We got to have ghosts. I, I, I want to say that this person is not uh, like a ghost all the time. Oh, I for don't sure. Know. So it's like, uh, you know, a transformation into this ghost spider. Oh, oh I meant what you're a whole describing separate... is Danny Phantom. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I meant as a whole separate threat. Like one of oh. these threat numbers has oh, to be one of like, these... oh, okay. Has to just yeah. be ghosts. Just that makes ghosts. sense. Let's just do ghosts. Yeah. Is ghosts. it ghosts question mark or exclamation point? Exclamation uh, point. It's these a, are, in we know these are ghosts. In Bay. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, number, what number should we assign to ghosts? Uh, we got to go with six. All right. Because uh, getting three of those. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. All ghosts. right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see what else can we throw um, in there. Um, I feel like there needs to be some kind of like natural. I was literally thinking the same thing, uh, like a natural disaster threat, incoming natural disaster threat. That's like threatening the the structural integrity of the historical district. Cool. Yeah, we can just go with natural disasters. Let's. Uh, where do we want to put that? Um, I want to get that on number two. All right. And let's go with, let's get one more. Um, yeah. Let's go with, I want to go with, um, gentrification. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking that, and I, I, I have a pitch for it, which is like, um, <laughs> um, corrupt. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out as a threat, like corrupt, corrupt tech development mm. mm-hmm. or like like i would i guess i'd call it like reckless capitalism like someone has built a death laser and they're going to like fire it off and it's going to cause harm right like someone has is developing something someone with money and mm. with money and not a lot of uh not a lot of Scribbles. ethics has built <laughs> something and is going yeah. to unleash it uh before you said that my my mind went to like a com- like a corrupt competing hero. Mm. Um, and I wonder if, if it would be interesting to combine those. Two. Oh, for sure. Um, they're like a city so they're, council member. Yeah. I, I feel like those are two. Those are, those are each of, each of those is its own. Very good threat is like a corrupt city council member who is trying to do something to like undermine is going to like launch an initiative that is going to get people hurt. And then like a, the worst possible Tony Stark is going to like blow something up. <laughs> oh, Elon Musk yep. is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> the worst gonna possible gonna Tony an, Stark is just Elon Musk. It's going to unleash an iPod <laughs> submarine and it's going to blow up and it's going to destabilize the city. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So what number are we giving reckless capitalism? Um, I want to give that a seven. 
Seven, Reckless yeah. Capitalism. Right, right next to Ghosts, but... Mm. Uh, you All know. right. So I think we can kind of leave it at that. We've got four yeah. very good threats, partially because uh, one of the things that is uh, in the book is that we can leave a lot of these numbers blank. And then when we when we come to them, we name what the threat is and then we kind of dictate what and then and then once we know what that threat is the first time, we fill in that number in subsequent occasions. OK, OK. And so those that's that's phase one of character creation. We've got hmm. like the seeds of who our characters are and like what they're going to run into. Oh, goodness. It, Which, if we left it there, I would be thoroughly disappointed. No, we've got so much more to learn about <laughs> these characters. I know. <laughs> Um, that's but that's that why is usually the- where it gets left when we make this show. <laughs> usually, oh, this is so cool. There's so much that could happen. Well, see you next time. Yep. <laughs> so let's go ahead and 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 walk through a, a turn of the game, and we'll yeah. kind of uh, get to learn a little bit more about our about our our character our characters in our city. Yay! So I have drawn the eight of diamonds. So I pulled it from a deck of playing cards. Um, I have the 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 I have the red Joker shuffled into the bottom half of this deck. So if we were to play through a whole game, we would draw the first half of the cards. And when we got to about 26 cards or so, we would know that somewhere in the next half of the game, we're going to flip that downfall. Yeah. Just to create that sense of tension in the air. OK. But I flipped the eight of diamonds going off of what we know. Uh, The first thing that's going to happen is I, as the city, I'm going to describe a scene to a hero. Uh, This is just I'm all I'm doing here is describing an ordinary place in the city Um, because it's a diamond. We know that it is a location in our battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this is. This is actually a natural, like a naturally forming cave that served a very prominent role in the battle. Hmm. And like hasn't been filled in like it hasn't been connected to the city like sewage system or like any of these other things like it's just this natural cave that like there's kind of a little bit of a city park that has formed around it that like part of this battle was fought in these caves. OK, that is the location there are. And it, it, it's kind of the 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 city park that is in this like this borough, right? Like it's kind of. It's so it's where people go and they have picnics and they read their books. It's Mm -hmm. it's where all of those like very ordinary everyday things happen. So those Mm -hmm. are the people that are here at this moment. I think some of the cave is like a walk in museum. There's little like plaques that talk about like Mm -hmm. the history of the battle. And so there are people sightseeing and there's people walking their dogs and there's people hanging around the park. Do they have like tours of the caves too? Oh, definitely. And there's also there's also probably like a splunking society, right? Like Ooh. there's like a like a town, like an unofficial mm-hmm. like splunkers club that like dives into the lowest parts of the caves. Yeah. So now I'm going to throw it to the villain. Ooh. We flipped an eight, which is not one of the threats that we put down. Right. So what's what's in danger here? Oh, goodness. OK. So now I have to make up kind of what is being targeted. Yeah. Like what, what is the threat that is putting these things in danger? Okay. So what is so the like, threat? if we had flipped a six, I would ask you like, how are ghosts putting this place in danger? If you had flipped yeah. a 10, like what is our spider hero? What is our spider villain? Like getting up to in these caves? Spider okay. Teen. Okay. With spider teen. With an I know, eight, I know what is in danger. I know exactly what this is. All right. Um, it is uh, the Spelunker Club um, went too deep <gasps> um, and un- unlocked an ancient evil. Yeah. Uh, from uh, the depths of the caves. That's um, real cool. Yeah. And so now we write down ancient evil on our eight. And anytime we flip an eight, there's going to be some kind of ancient evil. Oh, no. <laughs> so this just keeps building, huh? And that's the thing is every time you flip a new number, you add another threat to it. And so you create this kind of living log of like the city, the threats in the city, the heroes, enemies, their friends, mm-hmm. the ordinary people that live in the city that are so, so important. Yeah. You build all of this and like character creation in this game is literally Every turn, you're building more, you're learning more, you're learning more about the hero, you're learning other people that live in the city. It's mm-hmm. this whole sweeping experience. Awesome. I love this game so much. This is so good. good. Um, this is good. Yeah. And, <laughs> and really inadvertently, 
inadvertently I set up a um, Gandalf and the Balrog confrontation mm-hmm. uh, because I absolutely wanted this to be kind of a Balrog esque yeah. uh, creature. And we've got a magic using hero. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I will ask you just so that we can kind of prompt our hero properly. Roll me a six sided dice. All right. Do I oh, no, roll? roll me two D six? Roll me two D six and take the higher result. All right. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask because it was diamonds. Because it's right? diamonds. Thank you for knowing the mechanics of my game better. Than I, <laughs> <laughs> I can read. All right. Um, it was a one and a five. So gotta that's lucky. That, gotta <laughs> love that. Uh, gotta love that. That dichotomy. Yep. Um, all right, Amelia, I'm going to ask you as the hero. Mm-hmm. You have risen to the occasion and mm-hmm. saved the day. Who do you save and what does your great moment of heroism look like? Oh, um, I think there were people having a picnic kind of like at the mouth of the cave mm-hmm. um, when this ancient evil sort of rose up. Um, I think that it involved like gathering people up and then like teleporting them out and then going back in and sort of like collapsing part of the cave. <laughs> that's very cool. Like Ooh. and that's to try and like close it off. And what's cool about that is like now we know a little bit more about what your hero is capable of. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if they if we were playing like the full game, like we would I would add, you know, we would talk about like, what does that look like? How do you collapse that cave? Like, is this a separate spell or are you using more of your teleportation portals like and in Can doing I so a cool staff like Gandalf? <laughs> now that it. we've decided that there's a Balrog. Can I please have a cool <laughs> wizard staff? 100 <laughs> percent. Now yeah. we know you have a cool staff. Yes, like oh. nailed it. And like that. And now we know a little bit more about your hero and about the threats that you fight and how you fight them. Right. Like mm-hmm. you could have just as easily been like, I'm going to teleport this this ball rog back to another the dimension from which it came or I'm going to strike a peace accord with like you collapsing that cave tells us who your hero is. Right. Mm-hmm. Which means that like when we come to our downfall, we know a little bit more about like what's going to make your character ter- like what's going to make our villain terrifying. Mm -hmm. and that's that like you you've now because anytime you don't roll a one which is to say anytime you save everyone involved in a a scenario your renown goes up by one and you become a little more famous in the city nice there's a reason for this that i'll come up in a moment (laughs) Uh, um this is good the renown is peeling back the curtain secretly the meanest mechanic in the game (laughs) and i'll explain why in a moment um so that's that's the core of the game you if you if we were playing in in person you know with your journal like you could write down like i saved these people i banished this demon i collapsed this cave you could draw out the little park and like connect it to other locations but like we've now mapped out like a part of our city Mm -hmm. We know a little more of our city. We know more of the people. We know there's a Splunkers Club. We know there's this ancient evil hiding underneath the city. We we, we've seen all of these things and we've created a little more of our world. Wow. And now we're going to skip ahead a little bit. We flipped some cards. We've met some more characters. And now we flip that Joker. We've been playing for a while. Mm -hmm. Time we flip the Joker. Here's where we're going to meet our villain. And the way that we meet our villain is by answering, we each answer questions. We give Ryan a bunch of answers to questions. Mm. And then, Ryan, you get to tell us who the grand villain is. Okay. So we'll start with some questions for our hero. What okay. piece of yourself most scares you, and how do you see that amplified in the villain? Ooh. I think I don't fully understand my powers. Mm. But the villain clearly fully understands theirs. Okay. And has, like, decided how to use them. So I think that my fear is that, like, once I fully understand them, it will, like, it has to look like that. Like, that is the only trajectory. Cool. Um, Which kind of bleeds nicely into our next question, which is what weakness are you afraid will be discovered and how does the villain wield it? Oh. And this can be a literal weakness. Like, this can be, like, you know, your magic doesn't work under certain conditions. This can be an extension of the last question, which is you don't fully know how to use your powers. Like this can just literally be like, I am, I'm, my, my weakness is that like, I am not as tough as I, th- as, as people think I am. Yeah. 
What is the wording of the question again? Sorry. What what weakness are you afraid will be discovered and how does the villain wield it? Um, yeah, I think it goes back to just like not fully understanding what I can do or how to do it. I love it. All right. Now I have two questions. What part of the hero most scares you and how is the villain the worst version of that? You collapsed a cave like Mm -hmm. you saved people. But in doing so, like, you demolished, like, a piece of natural history. And it's, like, a place that people had been, like, exploring. And, Mm -hmm. like, you caused destruction. That is terrifying. That that one person has the ability to kind of decide this this place has to be destroyed. I think the villain is a version of that that is someone that, like, will make that decision recklessly or selfishly or cruelly. Mm-hmm. is terrifying. And it's not just terrifying because it brings with a destruction. It's terrifying because they are someone that thinks of themselves so confidently that they can make that decision without a second thought. Mm-hmm. And what is your biggest fear for the city? How does the villain embody that? I am afraid. I am afraid that the city is going to lose a piece of its history, that like there's something literal and metaphorical in the magic of this city, of this borough, this district that like the city as a whole is going to swallow it up. And I think however you Ryan want to interpret that this villain represents the destruction of the magic of this city. Okay. And now I have three questions for you. Okay. What power do you crave and how are you going to seize it? Okay. Um, so I think the, uh, this villain, uh, craves to take, the um the magic of the city for themselves okay and only for themselves what insurmountable odds will the hero have to overcome to defeat you oh let's see here um i think they're gonna have to um overcome a ritual that's been 100 years in the making Ooh, that's a good answer and what hidden weakness do you hope the hero never finds (laughs) <laughs> um where the ritual is uh finishing up mm. so then last but not least uh introduce yourself to the ca- like now you have a bunch of information tell us who your villain is okay um let me see okay so this is this is another magical based villain right Mm -hmm. um of some sort or or a villain that is trying to take the magic for themselves um and i want to say it's in it it's not somebody that's only been around for a lifetime it's somebody that's been around for uh multiple lifetimes um they've been around a while and they started this ritual a hundred years ago on the day that they figured out they have to start it to, to claim this for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of the other like happenings were just distractions to, uh, to keep the focus away from finishing this ritual since it's almost done. Um, Gosh. So it's 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 definitely somebody that's um they are immortal. Mhm. And love that. <laughs> Got to be. Yeah. Um and I think this is something that uh they they have access to like the ancient magics of the world that they've accrued over the centuries yeah right like um oh you've heard of king arthur and and merlin and and whatnot that was based on reality so to speak you know magic is real it's been around it's just been turned into legend that sort of stuff great and i can barely figure out how to teleport right (laughs) exactly so that so so this is a person that has full like control of their magical faculties. Mm-hmm. 
and um and how to how to cause uh and, and like the the foresight to to throw out distractions or cause damage or um uh throw off the hero uh just enough to give themselves more time effectively because okay. once they once they get the power um the city effectively becomes destroyed uh but they don't care because they're going to have that power and they'll become pretty much the most powerful uh person in if not the world the the galaxy so that's that's what they want mm-hmm. so sounds pretty bad it's not great not great no no uh what else do i need to answer here that's that's it um this would be this would be uh, in a fuller game, this would be where you describe uh, like how you defeat the hero, like what your big sort of debut is, right? Like what your big sort of uh, like chaos moment is, right? Like what that uh, that big villain moment kind of looks like. You would yeah. describe what that what that sort of chaos okay. thing is. And then you would describe like how you basically demolish the city. Because what happens, this is where I describe why Renown is the meanest mechanic in the game. (laughs) Um, The more for every card, for every point of Renown that the hero collects. You I if we're sitting at the table together, I hand you so that the the city holds on to this deck of cards through the entire game. Like I am pulling cards from this deck of cards. When it comes time, you take this deck of cards from me. You just take it right. You, you reach over and you just take it. And then for every point of renown that the hero has, the more renown that they've collected, the bigger a hero that they are. For every point of renown, you pull one card and you throw it away. Mm. There's a specific mechanic for what happens if you need to shuffle the deck before you draw a joker. But all those cards don't get shuffled back in the deck. They're just gone. They're just destroyed. You have caused damage to the city, which can never be recovered. Ooh. And it is specifically tied to how big of a hero the hero is, how many times the hero managed to save the city. Oh, that's brutal. It's brutal. And it's, it's tied to the idea that like <laughs> Superman, like when dark side shows up, the half of the earth gets demolished. Because yeah. Because, because it's a threat fitting Superman, who is Superman. Yeah. Whereas if Green Goblin, when Green Goblin shows up to ruin Peter Parker's life, it's not nearly as much because Peter Parker spends a lot more time barely scraping by. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so the idea so that that's how renown factors into it. And it's this idea that you're getting these points throughout play and you're like, oh, cool. I got another point of renown. I'm doing great. Wait, it does what? <laughs> no, no, I was playing. I well. saved the city if I had known. Uh-huh. And that's the thing. And then, and then, and then, we eventually f- come to our uprising, um, which which we'll just sort of briefly describe here because there's not really any big character creation bits in it, but like it's an important part of play in terms of like you kind of answer that question right. Like the hero is kind of confronted with the answers to that question, both from their own perspective and the city's perspective of like. Why did you do this? Mm. No, like, if like, or rather, is it worth it to keep doing this now that you know that you've caught that? Like, that like, with knowing all that you've kind of suffered and all of the loss that you've kind of got on your shoulders, right? The fact that you couldn't save everybody, the fact that this threat caused damage and you weren't powerful enough to stop it last time, can you make that decision to step up and save the day again? Like, mm. can you put yourself in that position of vulnerability? And the game tells you point blank answer. Yes. Like find, the, <laughs> find the reason that your character comes back. Right. Mm-hmm. And part of the city's role in the uprising is to point blank, tell the hero, this is what, why this is what you have done that we appreciate. Mm. So it's like you saved a bunch of, you saved, these are the people that you saved. Like you might feel like you, you lost people and that sucks. But we're here to tell you that we appreciate that you saved all these other people like this is the good that you have done. It Mm. is not undone because you were not powerful enough to also do this. Gotcha. And that's anyone can wear the mask in a nutshell. Oh, that's a pop culture reference point. Important message, though. Like, I know. Right. I mean, aside from superhero stories, this is like a personal thing that I struggle with and a thing that like 
I have a friend who keeps telling me of like, just because you aren't constantly making forward progress doesn't mean that you've never mm-hmm. made forward progress. That just because like you rolled back a little bit, like doesn't undo those good things that you've yeah, already you've done. done good. And like, I think that that's just a good lesson for life yeah. in general is that like, just because something goes badly doesn't mean that you haven't, like your contributions up to that point haven't been meaningful for both yourself right. and other people. Yeah. This is also a Doctor Who game now that I think it through. Like, it just, hearing hearing you describe that, I literally, I was like, I was like, why, what do I literally know? I was like, what is this quote? What do I know this quote from? And I realized it's a literal 11th Doctor uh, quote about like, every life is a pile of good things and bad things and the bad things don't soften the good things, but the good things or the good things don't, don't erase the bad things, but the bad things don't erase the good things either. And like, it's that idea of like, yeah, you didn't get a hundred percent, but you did good. And that Mm -hmm. is what matters. And you can continue to do good. And you have a responsibility to continue doing good. Like (sighs) there's a lot to it. And that's kind of the game in a nutshell. Like it is a game that I, I, I love this game a whole lot. And I, I, the idea that like, that to me is like that's that's the superhero myth, right? Is right. like you're gonna save the day, you're gonna fail, but the hero, the what makes a hero is they get back up and they save the day. Yeah, yeah. I like oh. that this like explores those like downsides too, without it being so overwhelming. Without like that being mm-hmm. the message of like here is the cost of being a superhero. It's like yeah. there is a cost. Like you do lose sometimes or Mm -hmm. you know things don't go like a hundred percent great or you know um but that idea that like you are still a hero yeah yeah exactly and Uh. it's it's that it's that you know the question is never is never are you just gonna fail it's 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 can it's you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you know can you accept it's 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 can you accept that it's not always gonna be a perfect success and yeah you know doing good in spite of that uh, you just kind of broke my brain because um, thinking about our scenario that we came mm-hmm. up with, like if there was no hero, there wouldn't have been any of these distractions. Mm-hmm. And if there weren't any of the distractions, there wouldn't have been a hero. And if none of that stuff would have happened, this villain would have just destroyed the entire city. Yeah. Completely. It- uh, out of the blue one day. The villain, all three roles need each other. That which reminds oh. me of this. I, I had a very specific thing I was going to say. Now that we've gone through the whole arc, I can point one thing to you. This whole game is recreating maybe five minutes of cinema. There's a there's a one there's <laughs> one movie scene that has created this entire game. And it is from the movie Spider-Man 2. The, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2. Mm. It is the scene uh, with Spider-Man fighting Doc Ock on the subway when Spider-Man, when when Doc Ock throws a subway car at him and he webs out and like he grabs the and he's like pulling on it and he stops the subway and then he collapses like seemingly dead. And the people in the subway kind of drag him in and his mask has been ripped off from the wind. And like he looks up and he panics for a moment and the little kid brings him the Spider-Man mask and is like, here you go, you lost this. And he stands up and like the he stands up and like the the guy just goes like, don't worry, we won't tell nobody. Yeah, it's 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 probably my favorite. Like, it's one of my favorite scenes, like superhero scenes ever. And it's this exact game, right? Like there is a villain that has thrown a threat at the hero and the hero has at great cost to themselves saved the day. Mm -hmm. And it's the city's job to look at them and be like, we see what you did. You know, the subway is destroyed. There's no there's no way we can recover that. But we see what you did. And it's our job to tell you, like, we're going to we've got your back. Gosh. And yeah, that's, that's such an like yeah. integral part of so many of those stories that like I think mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a thing that I think some of the I don't I don't read a lot of comics. Sure. And I so like I can't tell if it's like. The movies missed the point or like, but that's a thing that like kind of bothered me in like the Avengers movies and stuff is that like, there's Mm -hmm. just no, it's like there's collateral damage everywhere. And it's just like, it's fine. Like they mention it later on as like, hey, remember when everybody destroyed New York? But like, that just doesn't, but like in so many of those other stories, it's such an integral part. Like the relationship with Mm -hmm. the city is such Mm -hmm. an important part of 
those stories and like why yeah. they're heroes and you yeah. know like that's such a part of I don't know just a lot of them of like the city turning on them and like you know do we really want these mm-hmm. vigilantes uh, you know I don't know I don't know and and that was that was something that I kind of it's something that you can explore with anyone can wear the mask, but it was also given like a lot of the reference points that I was playing with. It wasn't it was something that I kind of like was pushing against a little bit like is that like in all of the Marvel movies, they kind of come from this place of like no one likes the superheroes. Mm-hmm. Right. And it kind of it rubbed me the wrong way because that's something that I like in superhero stories is uh, d- d- time for a two minute time for a two minute TED talk on on comic book theory. <sighs> <laughs> yes, uh, an ongoing trend that I think is really powerful in superheroes and a really key part of what makes superheroes the power fantasy that they are not to get too deep into the actual publication history of superheroes, but like as a medium that was created by working class Jewish people living in the 1930s, like it is an art like the superhero as a as a power fantasy representative of that original vision of the original people who are marginalized people living in an era that was extremely dangerous for them. It there's a lot, a lot of the superhero iconography, the lore of it consistently comes back to the idea that people, ordinary people look up to a superhero and the people that don't look up to a superhero. And this is something that is baked into the game's design is people in power. Mm -hmm. Superman's first enemy before Lex Luthor is introduced before Krypton, before he's identified as from Krypton, the first person Superman fights is a crooked landlord. It is the first person that he fights in Action Comics number 38 back in 19 Action Comics number one back in 1938. Superman fights a a landlord. It is the first person that he fights because these were kids living in a tenement, living in like a in like a tenement house like in Cleveland, like they they wrote a story where they were the bad guys and evil landlord like it is. And so I don't I wanted to write a story where like ordinary people, you know, you and me look up and see a magical person with incredible powers who just saved us from a runaway train. Mm-hmm. And the people that don't like that, they're the people that could have made a safer train and chose not to. Mm-hmm. And like that is a very important part of the the superhero fantasy to me is that like. If if I walked out of my door and a supervillain threw a pumpkin bomb at me and a guy in a spider costume shot a mat shot like magic webbing, grabbed that pumpkin bomb, threw it into the sky and it safely exploded away from me. <laughs> I'm going to love that guy. He just yeah, said guy's life. great. He's that weird, great. but he's great. <laughs> And if a newspaper then goes and if and like a news and if if the sleazy tabloid that could be reporting on Norman Osborne's corruption and chooses not to publishes an article that says this guy, that guy, nah, he's the worst. He's a menace. Mm -hmm. Well, then that newspaper is the problem. And that was something that I wanted to capture with the game is like is like two ordinary people. Mm -hmm. This hero. And it's it's a it's kind of also it's a little bit of where Batman comes into the game. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like is like crime families hate Batman and like the cops, the police, Jim Gordon, Jim Gordon aside, the police don't like Batman. Nobody really likes Batman except for that one person that is being robbed by that is being robbed by a man in a Mad Hatter costume (laughs) that then Batman shows up. That person goes, hey, Batman, thank you for saving me. Like you like I see that you are a hero. And that was something that I wanted to have in the game. And I'm kind of glad that it's kind of it's in there. Right. Like, yeah. I'm glad that that's yeah. the core piece of the game. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's goodness. a fun it's a fun piece to play with. Like, I don't think that a lot of superhero games get to like, at least not in that way. You know, like I think in, in masks, you still do kind of play in your city and you sort mm-hmm. of explore yeah. that and build the city and, you know, whatever. Um, but not in this way like i don't think Mm -hmm. you get to explore that direct interaction very often i agree completely i'm oh this was so much fun seriously this was so much fun (laughs) i'm so excited about this game jeff like this i'm so happy this turned out great like i'm i'm proud of you (laughs) thank you a a quality (laughs) use of your quarantine (laughs) i'm real happy with how it's turned out absolutely uh and i want to i want to play this game so bad right now yes my goodness Mm mm-hmm I'm so happy with how it's turned out. Like mm-hmm. it's everything that I love. It's it's my love of superheroes distilled into a game. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us again. This was 
just a ton of fun. Um, ah, I'm I'm really excited for this game. I'm excited for people to get their hands on it and play it and like muck around in their own cities. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Do you want to remind everybody where they can find this game, where they can find you, all that? Well, thank you so much both for having me. Uh, you can find all of my work at jeffstormer.com, and you can find anyone can wear the mask at jeffstormer.itch.io slash mask. Uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at Party of One Pod, where I'm going to be tweeting that link just about every day for the next month. So it'll you'll you'll find the link pretty easily. <laughs> we'll put it in our show notes, too. <laughs> exactly. It's also in the show notes. Oh, absolutely. And thank you to everybody out there listening. Uh, and please join us for the next episode for a discussion block. And I think it's going to be quite fantastic. I'm looking forward All to right. it. <laughs> Jeff was an absolute delight this whole series. And I truly love what we've come up with in these first two episodes. Uh, next time, we'll be getting into some really great discussion and some really stellar fanfic. Uh, But before we head out for the week, I just wanted to remind you all to check out my A Tale of Twinkle and Awe campaign on Twitch at twitch.chimera.games. And also check out Losers, A Love Story, an improv retelling of Stephen King's It using the Monster of the Week system and Christine Priebus's Back to Dairy supplement for it on the Horror Borealis podcast feed right here on the One Shot Podcast Network. Also, uh, not only for this show, for Horror Borealis and any other shows you can, uh, please leave reviews. Uh, We love them so much as creators, Uh, but particularly uh, we love making this show uh, and we love hearing from everyone about what they think of the show. Uh, Apple Podcasts obviously helps us the most as it moves us up in the rankings and and allows others to find the show. Uh, plus, uh, we'll actually re- read the reviews right here and thank you personally while doing so. Uh, even if it's only a single word of praise from you, uh, as exampled last episode. Uh, we really don't have anything else for now. Uh, So let's go ahead and get into the credits and the show blurbs as usual. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Remember to stay safe out there and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.
we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Session Zero. Session Zero is a discussion podcast that seeks to explore the psychology of role-playing. Each episode will feature RP concepts, stories, and tropes viewed through the lens of psychology by clinical psychologist Porter Green and industrial organizational psychologist Steve Discount. Join us on the couch for the next session.